Well, hello and welcome, everybody. This is your host, Ken D. Foster, and I'm so glad you joined us today. This is an important uh, video cast that we're doing today, and I hope you pay attention. You know, we're going to be talking about how to get rid of chronic pain permanently. Now, some of you are going, oh, that's impossible for me. Well, it is impossible if you have resistance to learning something new. That's what creates the challenges for all of us, right? So if you have a resistance, oh, this couldn't possibly be true. Oh, this isn't right for me. Oh, this, uh, my, my, my doctor told me, they told me that this, uh, this, whatever I have will never heal. Okay. If you got that mindset, I want you to set it aside today and really be open to some new ideas and new ways of thinking. If you're available to do that, if you could say, I can receive something new, and you really mean that, right? Don't let your little inner critic come up. You're going to find some information today that has helped uh, even uh, stars such as, uh, oh, what's the guy out of New York? Uh, ah, I can't think of his name right now. Well, anyway, a lot of people have healed with this, uh, with this modality. So we are going to be discussing how to heal your chronic pain. How cool is that? All right. Howard Stern is his name. We'll be right back, and uh, then we'll uh, take a deep dive with my guest. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers from one of the nation's leading financial firms. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity, and it's free. Call 800-615-2282. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. 800-615-2282. That's 800-615-2282. Call now. I've written a new book. It's called The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Wisdom to Unlock Your Genius, Your Soul, and to Transform Your Life. So it's daily strategies. I wrote this specifically because over the years I've noticed in my own life and in the lives of my clients that, listen, a little inspiration doesn't get it. A little wisdom doesn't get it. A little action doesn't get it. It's daily, dripping on the mind, dripping on those actions, taking specific focused actions towards your dreams and setting specific goals, right? Goals help us to transform the little self into the possibilities that we have in each of us. All of us are given dreams, and if you're sitting there and you're not manifesting that dream, it's just a little bit of you is chipping away every day that's not happening until you finally wake up and say, I don't know how I'm going to do this, but I'm going to connect with something greater than myself, my force, my God, my life, my universe, whatever. I don't care what you call it. You tune into that force, and that's what's going to get you to the next level. If you're living with diabetes and using insulin, you know the pain of pricking your fingers over and over again. By wearing a small remote device called a Continuous Glucose Monitor, or CGM, you can reduce the pain of pricking your fingers right away. If you're testing your blood sugar four more times per day, injecting insulin three or more times per day, or using an insulin pump, call the Diabetic Health Hotline today and learn about the latest CGM technology. Not only can a CGM immediately reduce reduce pain, it's accurate, easy to use, and helps you make better diabetes treatment decisions. And if you have Medicare, you can get a new CGM at little or no out-of-pocket cost. We'll also provide free shipping of your new CGM and we'll bill your insurance company for you. If you are testing your blood sugar four more times per day and injecting insulin three or more times per day or using an insulin pump, call now and learn how to receive your new continuous glucose monitor at little or no out-of-pocket cost. Hi, Kendi Foster here. Are you in a place that you would like to unleash the power within your mind? I teach a class, it's called the Limitless Experience. This is about intentional living. 
It's a great opportunity to learn how to operate your mind efficiently, expand your knowledge, tap into your inner wisdom, and connect with like-minded individuals who are evolving and making a difference in this world. This class is designed to help you unlock your true potential and achieve success in all areas of your life. By attending this class, you will gain valuable insights into your life purpose, legacy, how to get unstuck, how to break chronic patterns that are stopping your success, overcome limiting beliefs, and develop a positive mindset that will help you achieve your goals. I hope to see you soon at The Limitless Experience. Well, welcome back, everybody. Uh, the show today is called The Courage to Get Rid of, uh, of Chronic Pain, and we're talking with uh, Stephen uh, Ozanich. Uh, Stephen, welcome to the show. All right, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you here. Let me uh, let me give you kind of a formal introduction for people that might not know you. Uh, Stephen Ozanich is a mind-body health consultant. He's a teacher of Presence, a spiritual researcher and author of five books. His first book, The Great Pain Deception, placed as runner-up in the 2012 International Book Awards and has since become an international bestseller. Stephen's second book, Dr. John Sarno's Top 10 Healing Discoveries, was written as, a, uh, as an homage to the late Dr. John E. Sarno, who forever transformed the medical history with the discovery of TMS, which is the mind, uh, the mind body syndrome. And his third book, Back Pain Permanently Healing, uh, Understanding the Myth, Lies, and Confusion, uh, was the Amazon number one seller. And I'm so excited to interview you on this topic, uh, Stephen. So many people in this country are experiencing, whether it's back pain or neck pain or knee pain or ankle pain, chronic pain in their in their bodies. Um, why is that, would you say? Yeah, it's uh, completely unnecessary, but there's a reason for it, of course. And uh, in fact, the World Health Organization has stated as a couple of years ago that back pain's become the number one disability in the world. And it's not necessary at all because of what Dr. Sarno had discovered there. Well, what? Uh, let's talk about Dr. Sarno's really, really quick here. What? Uh, tell me a little bit about him and what did he discover? Sure. Um, I I started having severe back pain when I was fourteen, and it lasted just under thirty years. And of course, I had tried every medical you know gamut that they that I could possibly run, and it had helped so for a little while, and then it comes back. But in the late 90s, I I was so bad I couldn't walk anymore, and I was crawling around on my hands and knees, and my left leg was paralyzed. And we took an MRI, and it showed a pinched nerve there, you know, supposedly, ostensibly. Um, and I was weeks away from surgery, a surgical consult, I should say. And um, I found his work, Dr. Sarno, and I didn't believe it. I thought he was crazy because I saw the pinched nerve and I could see the paralysis in the leg. And he's saying it's not coming from that. You know, it's an emotional process, something he called TMS, you know, for tension, myoneural syndrome at first. And so I rejected it and I got worse. I lost 50 pounds. I was really dying at that point. And I went back because, you know, desperation breeds open minds often. You have to get worse. Like he used to say, this, the tragedy is that you, people have to get very bad before they're open their mind up to this. But and I did. I was one of those people. I threw his book. I was mad at him, but I hit. I got so desperate that I went back, and I began to see the brilliance in it, and I healed, and um, I ended up writing two more books on that same topic, and it works virtually every single time. I've seen tens of thousands of people heal from back pain, knee pain, shoulder pain. It's all the same thing. It's just in a different part of the body. And yet, so few people believe it. it. It became a controversial thing, which was really tragic at some point. But I threw the book, so I didn't believe it. I understand why people don't believe it, and I'm here to help them understand why they should believe it. Well, you know, we're taught in America to be skeptics and, you know, and look at things with a skeptical mind. I think we taught that's kind of ingrained in us, even in our socialization and through our schools. And so it doesn't surprise me 
that uh, people are resistant, but I'm hoping that uh, our audience today will open their minds because this is a, a modality that works. It works. Uh, it's worked for eons of time, and it's worked for uh, generations of people that are open and receptive to it. So let's talk a little bit about uh, what is the principle behind this healing, uh, this this healing force. Sure. Um, Dr. Sino, of course, he was a true healer. He, he passed away in 2017, but he worked for five decades at NYU. He, he had seen quite a bit. He was frustrated with his results. You know, surgery wasn't really working and therapy wasn't working. Injections weren't really working. And so he did what a healer should do. He looked into their records. He began to notice they had a lot of other health problems, not just back problems. They had allergies and all kinds of strange eating things, sleep problems, anxiety. And so he started to talk to them. He started to note a personality type, which is one of the great things he uncovered. It's more of a personality thing than it is a physical body thing. And um, he started to notice goodism and leading towards perfectionistic tendencies and um, the desire to make people happy and, and pushing themselves very hard. These people are often high achievers at very high levels. They push themselves to be the best of the best, like Tiger Woods, who had suffered from the same thing. And so um, once he started to explain to them, you know, maybe that MRI doesn't mean anything that that herniation is there. And that's the gnosis or the spondylolis thesis or the spondylolysis or whatever they want to call it today. Maybe it's uh, maybe it's there's some oxygen that's not getting to those nerves from the tension that's in your body, from all that you demand of yourself to be perfect. And he was astounded. Once he started to explain that, they started to heal. Just the knowledge of it. They didn't have to do anything. Just understanding that their brain was kind of distracting them. It was forcing them to think about their physical body and away from what was really bothering them, which of course are life's problems, you know, divorces and deaths of loved ones and jobs and bosses and all those things. And um, it works it works virtually every time. The understanding of what's going on, just the understanding. You don't have to really do anything. You have to gather knowledge. Well, what I'm hearing is that uh, we're storing um, our emotions in our body in some in some form. Is that yeah. is that accurate? Actually, you know, I'll let you answer that. But I got to take a quick break. So let me take a break, and we come back. Let's let's talk about that. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get MD Hearing's revolutionary Neo hearing aids for just $299 a pair. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The Neo is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Neo hearing aids for just $299. Plus, we'll add in a portable charging dock and ship your order absolutely free. The Neo is nearly invisible with its tiny in-the-ear canal design. And you can get two Neo hearing aids with a 45-day risk-free trial, free shipping, and free lifetime U.S.-based support for only $299. So call now. 800-789-7885. Again, that's 800-789-7885. Are you feeling stuck or in a holding pattern with your business or life and you're not doing the things you want or love? Then at some point, you're going to be faced with a decision. You'll either choose to keep living in your comfort zone and risk a life of mediocrity or increase your courage, step into your power and forge into the unknown where everything new becomes possible. If you're truly ready to live masterfully, then you need Ken D. Foster's newest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Strategies and Wisdom to Transform Your Life One Day at a Time. This powerful but simple guide provides you with 365 days of life-transforming wisdom, profound questions, and action steps that will increase your strength and open the doors to success. Stop wondering why your business or life isn't working. The answers are available now. Imagine if you had more courage or another chance to start following your dreams. To pick up your copy of The Courage to Change Everything, visit thecouragetochangeeverything.com. That's thecouragetochangeeverything.com. Imagine this is your money. 
and someone wants to take it from you. Who is it? The IRS. Guess what? They want your money and they can take it, all of it if they want. Remember, they sent you that letter right over here that said, hey, you owe us a bunch of cash and we're gonna take it from you right now. So what do you do? You fight back by letting our team of experts work it out with the IRS so you can keep your money. And hey, we're good at what we do. When you hire us, you get a team of guys on your side that know the IRS laws and we'll fight really hard to save your money. So if you owe the IRS a ton of cash and you wanna keep it, call right now and learn for free how we can help you put it back in your pocket. Five minutes of your time right now can save you thousands of dollars. And the best part, it's a free call. So please call right now. Are you ready to uplift your thinking, redefine what's possible, and have the energy, passion, and power to accomplish your greatest dreams? Hi, this is Ken D. Foster. For 28 years, I've coached over 10,000 people to see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and do the impossible. Now, I've put the time-tested wisdom principles into my latest book, The Courage to Change Everything, Daily Strategies and Essential Wisdom to Awaken Your Inner Genius. This book changes your thinking as you read it. It's time to change it deep inside. You know this. So come on, expand what's possible, increase your courage, step into your destiny, and order today at CourageToChange.us. That's CourageToChange.us. When you order today, you'll receive a personalized coaching session with me. Obviously, this is a limited offer. So why wait? Change for the better and order now at CourageToChange.us. Well, welcome back, everybody. Hey, this is Kenny Foster. We're talking with my guest today, Stephen uh, Ozanich, and uh, he has uh, several books out on uh, healing uh, chronic pain, healing pain in your body, pretty much any type. It doesn't have to be chronic. Um, okay, let's answer that question, uh, Stephen. That uh, you know is uh, are we storing uh, in our bodies our emotions? Yes. Um, I don't know if you've heard of Candace Pert but she kind of changed things in the 90s with her book, Molecules of Emotions, where she said she had, they had proved somehow, I don't know how she did it, that the, you know, the body was the unconscious mind. So if you think about a past memory, you're actually drawing on the cells of your body to bring that back, if you have any feelings about that or emotions or thoughts. And so um, the mighty emotion is anger, but it could be anything. It could be resentment or fear is a big one, of course. Um, sadness is another one that we underestimate a lot. And so any one of these emotions I begin to see as energy because that's what an emotion is. You know, we run on emotions. Uh, the body's just a frame really at some point. It, we're driven by certain things that drive us, right? And so I started to see my back pain as, you know, I was storing energy there, anger there. And it began to dissipate just like he said. And I started to hit golf balls even though I had a paralyzed leg, which I thought was kind of crazy on my own part. But it got worse at first, and then it started to dissipate. It disappeared forever. It's been 22 years, pain-free, symptom-free, because of the life work that he did. I'm forever grateful to him. But yes, it's an emotional process for the most part. So you have to kind of well, ignore. You have to kind of ignore. Let me, let, yeah, let me ask you. Um, you know, on the, uh, you know, you wrote the book, the uh, the ten. Uh, I don't have it off the top of my head here. Let me. Uh, I, yeah, the uh, where is it? Where is it? The 10, uh, yeah, well, you know it, but the yeah, 10 healing top discoveries. 10. Yeah, 10, 10, but yeah. Uh, so Dr. John Sarnos, what, what were some of those healing discoveries that, that you wrote right about? Well, a few of them are that, you know, that he discovered, and by the way, it's been clinically proven. This is, these aren't theories. And he trained, you know, a few dozen doctors and they've seen the same thing that I'm seeing as well, that, you know, that almost all, of our health problems are an emotional process that's wholly unconscious that you're never going to feel those emotions that's why you have the symptom the symptom is the emotion you need to look at it that way because the fact you're not feeling the emotion means that you had the symptom okay so you can think of the back pain as anger and that was one of the things another thing was what he called the symptom imperative phenomenon which i think should have won a nobel prize in medicine that 
you know, people will have a surgery like on a back disc, for example, and they'll say, no, that, that, that TMS is wrong. My, my surgery worked. But pretty soon the next disc hurts and the knee hurts or the shoulder hurts. Nothing was healed by the surgery. It just shifted forms. And that's what he means by the symptom imperative. It's shifting forms. As long as you need a distraction in your life from all the demands you're making on yourself, you're not going to be able to stop it. It's like whack-a-mole where you hit one mole and the other one pops back up again. It drives people crazy and they're constantly at the doctor thinking, well, that surgery worked, but now I have another problem. But it isn't true that surgery did not work. It just shifted forms because the whole idea of the brain is to keep you distracted. And as long as you're worrying about your body and trying to fix it somehow, you're TMSing is the phrase. You're paying attention to the body. You're not going to heal because it's not a physiological problem. No matter what the testing shows, you know, I, I see testing from thyroids and skin problems and this. Well, look at this level. This level is up. Well, yeah, it's because you're stressed out. You're tensed out. You're asking a lot from yourself. You're not allowing yourself to heal. And so, um, Allowing yourself to heal is one of the best things to do. But, you know, we have to be responsible here today. We can't say, you know, just ignore everything. You know, we, I've seen aneurysms in people's spines, and we, we want to make sure that there's something that's not dangerous there. So please get checked out. But then once you get an MRI or an X-ray, it shows arthritis and normal changes like that. You can pretty much ignore it at that point and just start to live again. But there's, there's a problem there. You know, sometimes the knowledge helps people immediately. I've Zoomed with people with 40 years of back pain and it disappears. 10 years of back pain, it disappears. I've gotten emails, 50 years of back pain, it disappear with my books. Sometimes it doesn't happen. That Those are the lucky ones. Some people need a little bit more work, you know, whether it's, you know, to keep persevering or keep trying to convince your unconscious mind to stop doing that to you. And then there's a small group of people that need some therapy because they were extremely abused children, you know, abandoned children. And so there are different levels to this, of course. The worse the symptom is, the hotter the emotions are under there, but you're never going to feel them. Well, you know, I've uh, taken my own life and um, what I've learned is that all healing is a quest. I think that's what you're saying. You know, it's it's a quest. So it's, it's you know, we're looking at the mind, we're looking at the body, we're looking at the emotions, we're looking at the spiritual side. We're looking at the areas of our life that, and I've been a life coach for 26 years. So we're looking at those areas where where you're out of balance you just are and you know and, and it's so funny I, I love what you're saying because yeah stress we know will show up in the physical body a lot of people can get that right i had a client this week who uh finally got it she got shingles and she went i got it i got it i said what do you mean you got it he said well i needed to slow down i didn't listen my my inner voice was screaming at me. I didn't slow down. I didn't slow down. I kept pushing, 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 stressing, stressing, stressing. And this, now I have this. He said, but as soon as I got it, she said, this week I went to the doctor. They cut my medication. It has been looking much better. Um, yeah. As soon as it was just the knowledge of it, of what to do. It's amazing. Exactly. It is. You know, it, when you said that, it reminded me of my mother on her 70th birthday. On her birthday, we had to rush her to the hospital with back pain and shingles. You know, it's the unconscious anger of aging. It's one of the biggest triggers in our lives is, you know, the hands of time ticking. Our mortality is one of the most enraging things of all, you know, but there's an infinite number of triggers. You know, there's some people drive through the same intersection to have back spasms or, or smell a certain smell from childhood and they go into pain. So anything can trigger us, but aging had triggered her. Yeah. Well, you know, I just had my uh, 71st birthday and, uh, it, you know, it was, it was a, you know, I went out and did a triathlon uh, for my 71st birthday. This just happened this week. And, uh, I, but I'll tell you when I hit 70, all the collective consciousness of the way 70 is supposed to be and you're, it just hit me and I started slowing down. I started gaining weight. I, st I was like, what is going on to my, and I went, I bought into it. Why did you? That's it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. It's somewhere in the Bible, it says the devil is a liar. It says in the Bible and that it's your mind at some point, you know, um, I, I, I quoted Satchel Paige, the old picture, you know, he said, how old would you be if you didn't know how old you were? Hmm. You know, what if you woke up tomorrow and you thought you were 25? And by the way, this has been proven. I forget her name is Langley or Langford. She's an aging study researcher from Harvard. They test the telomeres, you know, at the end of the DNA. 
that they put him in a 50s environment and they got three years younger in just a few weeks because that's the, where they were reflecting back. Well, I got, I did a physical, I did all this blood work and it came back and I had my doctor look at it and, she, and I said, well, tell me what all the markers are saying to you. What, what's going on? She says, Ken, you, you have the markers of a 30 year old right now. And I went, okay, I'll take it. You know, and not only did I take it, like, you know, I, I embraced it. I went, okay. And, you know, it's like I had more energy that day <laughs> or the next day, right? That's right. Imagine, imagine when you see a herniated disc on an MRI, all of a sudden the tension goes through their spine like you can't believe, yeah. you know, and they get worse. You know, then of course they'll, I mean, there's been stories of people have died from cancer and then they did autopsies and there wasn't any cancer cells in there. You know, they, they thought they had it, you know. And so we can, we have to change our mindset first or change our perceptions, a better way of saying it about life, you know, aging. We don't want to, we don't like the getting old because we see what happens, but if you don't get old, you die young. So what do you want? Do you want to get old? Yes, you do. You do want to get older. I just don't want to suffer at all. Well, you know, there's getting old and then there's getting old pain-free. And I think that's really what yeah, it's exactly. quality of life. And, you know, for me, um, you know, I think anybody that's in, in really good health, you know, we work at it, right? It's it's not something that just happened. You know, it's like I didn't just go to the gym one time and work out, right? I I work at it and I work at it. Um, in a, first of all, like you just said, it's through that conscious place that, uh, you know, it's mind over emotion, emotion over action, action over result, results over our destiny, right? So it's that level of mind we start to work at and and notice, you know, very consciously what's working, what's not working. <laughs> that can I eat this food? Can I not? This how's my body show up for that? How much exercise do I need? You know, it's those mm-hmm. pieces. Sure, and of course, I, I think it was a Buddha that said, um, you know, everything you're doing is to avoid suffering. Um, you 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 go to the doctor to avoid suffering, the dentist to avoid suffering. You. You work to make money so you don't have food hunger, you know, suffering with that exercise to avoid future suffering. You know, and in a way, we overdo it. In a way, we overdo it. You know, we're, we're so obsessed on it. I've, I've always said, you know, if we could just put all of our energy and focus on how to live instead of how not to die. We would be we would be so transformed, you know, and so I. I'm more peaceful than ever at this time. I, I've helped people reverse deafness. I helped a lady get her hearing back. I, I've helped people get over cancer and MS symptoms and lots of pain, pain people. And anybody who is willing to, because nothing happens without willpower, nothing. You can't, you can't raise your arm without willpower. And so you have to be willing to heal. And I'm saying right here, about 80% of the people statistically aren't. About 15 to 20% will accept what we're saying here today. Statistically, Dr. Sarno looked at it, and through my own work, he's right. About 80% will say, no, my doctor said, and as soon as they say that, they've negated their healing immediately. Well, you know, the first the first thing I learned in healing was that we had to take back my own power, right? Yeah. I could be giving my power away to the doctor or to the friend or to the school i needed it i needed to take it back and what what that really means is that i had to know and had to understand what intuition was about i had to know that little still silent voice that's in me and every single other person on the planet and i had to start learning how to tune into that and learn about it you know but once i did then then things changed for me that's beautiful. You know, intuition, Yogananda used to say, you know, intuition is a lost art. We're, we're too, in, you know, we're too overrun with information and technology and we've lost the art of institution or, or intuition. You know, an animal, when it's sick and wounded, it goes and it rests until it's healed. It, it instinctively knows how to do that. But human beings, they go off of vacation and they come back more exhausted than they were before they left, you know. But what you said reminded me of something that Neville Goddard had said. I just, I just saw it. I'm looking at it now. He said, if you desire health, you must assume it. Even though the doctor's you know, tests produce, produce proof to the contrary, you must be ever aware that they are not your God. When you point to another as your authority in your world, you're transferring the power that belongs to God to an idol. You know, and so well, we are that power. We are that power. Well, that isn't that the truth? And uh, when I was waking up, I uh, came across a guy by the name of Cubby, and he said, you know, we pray from God to God. 
boy, that stuck in my head. I went, what does that mean? I had to learn what that meant. Right? I had to learn that the power is within us. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's there if we're willing to look at it. And, you know, I, I want to say that you mentioned that, you know, about 20% of the population is open to something new. I believe this, uh, this show, this format, I believe this audience here is not only open and receptive to new ideas and new ways of thinking, they're out there making a difference and passing it on to others because that's what we need if we're going to change consciousness. I want to share this one last thing, and I'm going to take a break. Um, and when I come back, I'm going to take a, a, a little deeper dive into many some, some practical things people can do to start their healing journey today. Um, it, so I, th I think we'll just do that. I'll take a break. We'll come back, and then we'll, uh, we'll discuss that. Are you over the age of 50 and considering buying an annuity in the next 60 days? I have some important news for you. Don't buy an annuity until you understand the pros and cons of annuities. Call now for this free book on maximizing your income in retirement. Annuity Do's and Don'ts for Baby Boomers from one of the nation's leading financial firms. That's right, free. This book reveals little-known truths about annuities in simple-to-understand terms. Grab a pen right now because we're about to offer you this free book that unlocks the five little-known truths we believe baby boomers and seniors should know before buying an annuity, and it's free. Call 800-615-2282. As a bonus, we'll also throw in a free annuity rate report. We researched numerous products and summarized rates and benefits of annuities, all from Silac Insurance Company. 800-615-2282. That's 800-615-2282. Call now. Do you listen to the TV on high volume or have trouble hearing conversations? Then you would benefit from hearing aids. Don't waste thousands on expensive hearing aids when you can get MD Hearing's revolutionary Neo hearing aids for just $299 a pair. Don't be fooled by higher priced hearing aids. The Neo is a true hearing aid, not an amplifier. With rechargeable technology many customers say is superior to more expensive models. Call now and get not one, but two Neo hearing aids for just $299. Plus, we'll add in a portable charging dock and ship your order absolutely free. The Neo is nearly invisible with its tiny in the ear canal design. And you can get two Neo hearing aids with a 45 day risk free trial, free shipping, and free lifetime U.S.-based support for only $299. So call now. 800-789-7885. Again, that's 800-789-7885. Imagine, this is your money, and someone wants to take it from you. Who is it? The IRS. Guess what? They want your money, and they can take it. All of it if they want. Remember, they sent you that letter right over here that said, hey, you owe us a bunch of cash and we're gonna take it from you right now. So what do you do? You fight back by letting our team of experts work it out with the IRS so you can keep your money. And hey, we're good at what we do. When you hire us, you get a team of guys on your side that know the IRS laws and we'll fight really hard to save your money. So if you owe the IRS a ton of cash and you wanna keep it, Call right now and learn for free how we can help you put it back in your pocket. Five minutes of your time right now can save you thousands of dollars. And the best part, it's a free call. So please call right now. Well, welcome back, everybody. We're talking about the courage to heal. And uh, I've got uh, Stephen Oz Ozem on my show today. I'm so excited to have you, Stephen. You know, Steve, for those of you that don't know Stephen, Stephen is a, uh, uh, he's a health uh, consultant. He's a spiritual researcher. He's a man that uh, has healed. He knows this uh, from the inside out. He's not only healed, helped others heal, he's healed himself. So speaking of that, I don't want to comment on yeah, you know, at what point we get to realize what we study, right? So I studied healing and healing modalities, and then I had a ski accident up in uh, Mount, Mammoth Mountain uh, on December 31st, I think it was 2018, maybe. 
And uh, I tore up my uh, ACL uh, on my right knee, and I tore up my ACL, my MCL, medial meniscus, and I had a bone fracture. And my knee was swollen like crazy. And I came down the mountain, and my wife said, you know, we know uh, a lady in San Diego, Sharon Edmondson. She does stuff called Owen work. She said, you should go see Sharon. So I went to Sharon, and Sharon gave me a treatment uh, uh, that uh, walked out of her office. About 80% of the pain was gone, just like that. And um, and the uh, she gave me a formula to uh, to reduce the swelling. Within three days, my leg, swollen like crazy, was back down to normal. Now, is that possible? Well, of course it's possible because I realized it, okay? It, and I'm saying this is because we not only can heal, we can hold quickly with the right... Uh, I, I was always told, Yogananda said this, I think. It was the... He said that yeah, it's the power of the healer and the receptivity of that being, person being healed, right? So it's a combination. So I'm saying that to you because here I've got Stephen uh, Ozanich, who's a healer on my show today. And it's like, if you're there thinking, wow, I need to, I need to heal, I'm going ex- to share with you. That I think, you know, he's got some books out there. That would be a great place to start your healing journey. So, Stephen, um, let's get some practical ways that people can start this journey. Sure. Um, of course, in your case, it was an accident, right? And yeah. um, injuries need time to heal, of course. Um, we're, we're seeing our health care is radically different these days because we're in an evolution in human consciousness right now. Let's just admit it. Um, we're, healing has a purpose to help it. Or, or, I'm sorry, the swelling has a, has a purpose to help it. But if it's not healing, Okay, then there's something blocking healing, of course, because the body's natural state is wellness. That's what it wants to be. The flow of the universe, the the flow of energy in life, that is it. The harmony of God or consciousness, whatever you want to call it, right? That's it. It wants to be well. If if it's not there, then there's a reason that it's not healing. And of course, you know, get tested, go to the doctor, make sure there's nothing dangerous there, be responsible, your life is too precious. But beyond that, we have to start looking at an emotional process and reasons behind it not not healing. And I'm telling you, Dr. Sarno found that reason because I'm seeing people heal from everything, from everything. But they have to be accepting to it, like the the Master Yogananda said. You know, um, he said, you know, that never even think about these health problems. Don't even allow your mind to entertain them. He said, if if you can change everything changeable and curable, Yogananda said, and the consciousness of anything being chronic is a delusion at some point. You keep looping it through these neural pathways in your mind. The problem, the problem. I've seen people he, he had skiing accidents 20 years ago, and they were limping for 20 years. And they, they read my book, and they realized it had healed 20 years ago. Okay? But the, the thought that it's forever damaged because their doctor told them that kept them forever damaged. That, that, by the way, that was me. That was me. And my other leg, my left leg, I tore a medial meniscus and had a little operation to pull out a couple of pieces. And I limped and hurt for 10 years until uh, just that. I, I came across a guy who said, what, what are you doing? Why are you limping? What? That's a long time ago, you know? And I said, well, yeah, but I still got pain. He says, listen, why don't you do this? Why don't you go out and try to run uh, just run a hundred yards. See if you can do that for like 20 days in a row. See what happens to it. That's all kind of, and it was gone. It, it, it went away. It, it, all that metal yeah. garbage yeah. about, yeah. and then I put around it, 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 you know, the rationalizations of what it, it just healed. I was like, this is incredible. You, was, you, you did what Dr. Sarno called the most important thing, you know, cause everybody's looking for, you know, steps and tell me what to do. Tell me what to do. Right. So I, I had a partially paralyzed leg. I was dragging my foot and uh, I tried to run. He kept saying, you know, the most important thing to do is to get more physical. Because you've got to what prove it, just to get more, get more physical. Get more physical. Yeah. Okay. More, the more rigorous, the better, he said. Because you're trying to prove to your brain to stop doing that to me. You know, it's healed a long time ago. And so I, I had back pain so bad. I was, I was almost dead. I really believe I was dying. I, I stopped eating for a week. And I tried to run around the block. It must have been a sight to behold. <laughs> you know, it must have been a 30-minute mile. But at the end of that mile, I started to feel a little relief. And I kept doing it from month after month after month until it was gone. 
Well, I could sure relate to the 30 minute miles in nine. <laughs> That's hysterical. But you know, I, you know, with that, with that physical uh, stuff, what I did is, you know, I, I, first of all, I ran like, you know, as far as I could, and then I'd stop and then I'd walk and I'd go a little further. And each day I pushed myself just a little more. And, um, you know, my goal was to be able to get well, one mile. That was my goal of running. And eventually I got that, you know, and then I got, you know, I pushed myself a little more. And then at the one point I signed up for a, a 5k marathon and didn't know if I'd ever be able to do it, but you know, I got through that. And then I signed up for a half marathon and I got through that. And then I did a full marathon. You know, I just kept pushing myself a little bit more, a little bit more. I'm not suggesting that this is anybody's path. This is my path. Um, you know, and, um, you, you know, so for me, it was, like I said, it was just a quest. And also to realize that mind, body, actually the soul, mind, body connection. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, like I said, everything comes from, on meditation through intuition, you know, uh, daily practice. And then, uh, you know, and then again, like you just said, then it's taking action. It's going out there and doing something physical. Sure. Yeah. I, I, as you were saying that, I was, I was thinking back on my own trials. I, my goal was that I, I even got a stopwatch out. My goal was to stand up for 10 seconds because I was, I couldn't walk, you know, for months. I couldn't sit for two and a half years without severe pain. And so I, I did it. And I remember falling down on the bed. I said, I'm going to go to 30 seconds and I'm going to go to a minute. And I, I, I did it. But I was, I mean, I was in more severe shape than most people that hired me, actually. But, you know, it is mind, body, soul. You know, um, my company's TMS Consulting, the mind, body, spirit. Because without that knowledge, those are the people that heal the deepest and the fastest are the ones who are spiritual people every single time. You know, other people may have some you know, advances, but then they fall back into something else. Well, I personally learned early on that when we're um, doing something that seems bigger than ourselves, uh, uh, when we're, especially we're talking about healing, it's important to bring the, uh, the spirit into, into that. And, um, you know, through practices of increasing dynamic will or divine will, uh, as opposed to human will, trying to push things ourselves. So, uh, there's a piece there that um, oh, it's we're not we're not paying attention though that the answers are being sent to us every day and we're not look, looking for them. I I was shown Dr. Sarno's book by a friend of mine and I threw it. I threw it. it that was the universe sending it to me through him. And I, and then um, I just rejected it. I, I rejected everything that I'm trying to explain to people today. And so I understand why 80 percent of them don't don't want to believe it. Well, Jim Carrey made a good uh, movie about it. It was called Yes, Man. And if you are one of those resistance uh, people, like I was and like Christina was, um, you may want to watch that movie <laughs> and just practice yes for the next seven days, right? Just yes. Say yes. Oh, oh, what just what, what, what does it hurt to read the book? You know, it, it doesn't really hurt to read the book, but you have to be accepting to it. You know, people would come in with Dr. Sardo and show him their MRIs and he didn't even really look at them. You throw them down because he didn't really pay much attention to them. They would say, aren't you going to read those? He said, do you want me to look at them? And they said, yeah. So he would read them for their benefit, he said. But he said, you know, would you be open to the fact that these this arthritis and this stenosis and these little tears in the meniscus and that aren't causing the problem? No, not really. And so they would go struggle. But so you have to be open and accepting. And that's, you know, David Hawkins talks about that, you know. Courage is the first line where everything changes and then willingness is the next line. And it works every single time. It works every well, I'm going to put your book up there, but you just said the magic words, courage. So I'm just going to throw my book on the screen right now. So that's my lady's book. It's the courage. It's courage. courage. I didn't yeah. know that. You got it. Yeah. You already figured this out. Beautiful. Yeah. So but I want to put your book up there. So this is uh, your, your latest book. It's called Back Pain Permanently, Permanent Healing. Permanent was the word that got me. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. Stephen knows what he's talking about here. Um, you know, what's, um, you know, let's just talk about your story. I mean, you must have had to go through some, uh, uh, you know, some real healing to get this uh, a paralyzed, semi-paralyzed leg to work 100%. That, that healing was not just physical, I take it. That was emotional. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, you know, the soul knows the journey that it's on. We, we get locked up in our ego and our mind and, and who we think we are and all these things. 
try, and of course, the number one thing Dr. Sarno saw in his patients is they were still trying to please their parents. You know, they were driving themselves so hard trying to get that acceptance and praise. And so the parents had a big role at one point, you know, and that relationship is paramount. If they don't get acceptance and praise, they've gotten, they pushed themselves to extreme ends. You know, I, I quoted that comedian Ray Romano in my first book. He said, if my father would have hugged me one time, I would have been an accountant. He said, <laughs> because he, he said he never, he never knew if he liked, I didn't know if he really, you know, accepted me or anything. So I was trying to get more praise and more money and more fame, you know, but if he would have said I was okay as a son, I just would have been at a regular job at that point, you know, and that's why they're funny comedians because they're so observant about our lives and they show us the absurdity and you know, that it makes us laugh. But yeah, I had a I had a long healing journey. I'm trying to prevent people with my books from having to go through that long journey like I did to kind of shorten it for them. But, you know, I believe that it was psychologically safer for me to heal quicker because all the traumas that I had had in my life leading up to that leg paralysis. And so um, that was just my journey. Some people heal while I'm talking to them. The first time it happened, I thought they were teasing me. <laughs> and I said, come on, get up and bend down. And so they got up on the Zoom camera and they were running around. They were crying. You know, it, it was gone. So it can happen that way. It's not normal. But, you know, the normal route is to read the books. And, of course, to buy, you have to be open. And everything starts with courage. And that's, this is right from David Hawkins. This is where I learned this. You know, he was one of the greatest healers I had ever seen. He wrote the greatest healing book I think I've ever seen called Healing and Recovery. It just blows my mind away. But you have to have that courage line. And then the universe begins to shift and the, the flow of energy begins to support you. Well, and I, you know, I believe the first step of courage is letting go of your resistance and allowing yourself to explore something you've never explored before. Uh, go do something you've never done before. Maybe uh, buy a back paint today. And just say, you know what, I, I buy a lot of books in the past and I haven't read them. Well, okay, this is your time to go enough of that nonsense, buy the book and then read the book. It's just a read. It's every day. You say, I'm going to read 10 to 15 minutes a day. And you, you make that part of your healing habit, right? We all have to, you know, find some habits that work for us. You either got poor habits or you got more habits that are enlivening you and Taking your body and your mind and your soul to higher levels and higher heights, right? So it's it really is, but it just starts with that first step of courage. Yes. Yeah, that's I think that's why Lao Tzu started the Tao Te Ching. You know, the the journey of a thousand miles starts with one step. You know, and, and I knew that quote at the time, but yeah, you know, resistance is everything. I don't know if you know Eckhart Tolle's story, but the night before he had that awakening in 1977, he had heard really loudly in his heart from his heart chakra, "Resist nothing." You know, resist, start, start to let go, stop pushing back. Is that anger is a resistance? You know, anger is a rigidity. It's a refusal to let go. It's got to be my way. You know, ego, 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 which is the mind. Ego is the mind. And so there's a lot. There's a lot of work some people have to do. There's not a lot of work other people have to do. And so I hope somebody is just open to it, and and is of course responsible with their life. And um. You know, I would love to hear from some people, you know, because it's just fun work. It really is. It's a blast doing this work. Yeah. And it's it's very difficult. I remember the Buddha said, you know, I can explain my work in detail, but finding people that are willing to listen is the harder part. And so I appreciate this opportunity from you right here today because not a lot of people want to hear it. And it's it's interesting that uh, we get so programmed in our little uh, ways, in our little thinking. I think you you uh, you. The reason, the cause of that is what I think we addressed earlier is because people don't want to experience any more suffering. They've had, uh, you know, they've had challenges. They've had pain in their life. Maybe they're in chronic pain right now. They're like, well, what if I, what if I do this and it doesn't work? Well, I think you have to ask a what if question on the other side of that. What if it did work? Right? What if, what if you actually got out of chronic pain permanently? Are you willing to find the courage to do that? I think that's those are questions we need to start asking. I think Dr. Sarno answered that question for me in his great book, Healing Back Pain, it was called. It, it transformed the consciousness of our planet when it came out. It's still number one, I think, as far as back pain out there. But um, he said in his decades of work at NYU, he said, I've, I can't recall one patient ever who got worse. That helped me to have the courage to start to take a step forward as, as well, you know. 
you know, but you know, I had to buy, I had to believe him. And it was hard for me to believe him because I had paralysis and I saw the MRIs. It was very difficult to believe him, but he was so genuine and so beautiful and so honest that his personality, I bought into him, you know, and so you have to buy into the person at some point, whether they're, they're telling me the truth or not. But I told him on the phone, I said, listen, if you hadn't given all the examples of people healing, I would have never healed. I needed to hear people were healing at some point, you know, and so it, it took me a long time. I don't think the people I work with don't take as long as I took, but I had nobody to go to at that, that point. And so, um, and of course you brought up something about habits and stuff, you know, Yogananda said, you know, you think you're a body, but you're just the pattern of memories and emotions as it keeps rolling. It keeps rolling and rolling and finding new form at some point, you know? And so we have to break those habits and the people have the opportunity right now. St. Paul said it in Romans 12 too, do not conform to the patterns of this world. If somebody tells you you can't heal, do not buy into that. Do not buy into that because if you believe it, it will be. It, it will be. be. You know? It will be. By the way, for those of you in our listing audience, uh, if you'd like to find out more about uh, Stephen Ray uh, Ozanich, please uh, go to, where is that, uh, uh, Stephen? What's the website? SteveOzanich.com. Okay, let's spell it for our listing audience. Sure. S-T-E-V-E-O-Z-A-N-I-C-H.com. Steve, S-T-E-V-E-O-Z-A-N-I-C-H dot com. You can find his books and connect with Stephen at that site um, to really start your healing journey. Why not? Why not today? You know, what else are you doing? You know, if you uh, if you find the courage, if you, you know, what if you were courage, you know, you're courageous. What, what actions would you take today to start your healing journey, right? Yeah. Just ask yourself that question. I'm not asking. I'm, I'm giving that to you to ask yourself, what if I was courageous today? What actions would I take to start my healing journey? I didn't. That's, uh, that's that's the question. I didn't know you had a book out of courage. I was happy to see you hold that up. That's beautiful. I, I quoted, you know, I, I was asking the same question in my first book, you know, and I so I quoted uh, General Patton, George Patton. He said, courage is fear holding on one minute longer. So it's really a not giving up at some point. Yeah, it's not giving up, and uh, you know, I wrote that book on courage uh, because I, I found this: we don't need courage now and then. We need courage every single day. And that book has uh, 365 days of courage, where you are reprogramming your thinking, you are taking specific actions to put the courage in your life. So that your life becomes uh, a beautiful reflection of who you are, right? I mean, it's hard to reflect who we are as a, in a when we're in pain. It it just is, you know. When we're in pain, it feels like it's going to last forever. It's always going to be this way, and we have a lot of rationalization. Doctors or friends or family, maybe just yourself, saying, "Yeah, this I deserve this," or "Yeah, this happened." You know, I shouldn't have been doing this. And this happened, and now I'm in this. And, yeah, that's probably going to be that way forever. It's all made up. All of that's made up. It's you a delusion. Up. Yeah, that's what Yogananda said was a delusion. It's a delusion in your mind. We've got to erase the possibility from the mind. I mean, that courage is very important. I, I tell people that I work with all the time, it takes courage to heal. It yeah. does. It's not It's not for the faint of heart, It's some, especially if it's a very serious thing. It takes a hell of a lot of courage, but you know, anybody can heal. I'm not saying anybody will heal because I don't know what their unconscious motivations are for not healing. You know, if you know Anita more Johnny's story, she had died from late stage cancer. And um, um, she, you know, she's out there saying the same thing as, as I am. You know, cancer is not a disease. You know, it's not a disease. It's a dis-ease. You know, it's a, it's a, um, it's a conflict. It's deep rage. You know, it's putting all their effort into being somebody else. You know, it's just, yeah. it's just, and she got torn apart. She had to die. She said, I had to die before I realized that, you know, that to become myself at some point. Well, listen, we got caught up in the flow and uh, I, we got to go. <laughs> We're, uh, our time's up here. Uh, Stephen, I hope you come back. And, uh, and I really mean that. I'd love to have you, you know, come back and offer some more of your insights, your wisdom, your understanding. And I hope my audience uh, uh, connects with you and, and uh, you know, starts their healing journey today. So thank you so much for being here. 
Sure, no problem. And thank you for the opportunity to explain this. Absolutely. This is a great conversation. So for all of you, I'd like to thank you so much for being a part of the show today. You can find all the replays at voicesofcourage.us. You can tell Siri, Quintana, or Alexa to play Voices of Courage podcast. It'll come right up. You can tell them to play the current episode. This uh, episode will come up also. So from my heart to yours, I pray that you will continue to look for and see the unseeable, know the unknowable, and then do the impossible. Thank you.